Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Voice View on Africa. My name is Derek Matishak, and I'm a senior research consultant with the Institute for Security Studies in Pretoria. We've changed our advertised program for today due to the dramatic events which have taken place in Zimbabwe last night, the evening of the 14th of November, where Zimbabwe's succession battles to receive to succeed the 93-year-old Robert Mugabe seem to be coming to a head. Overnight, the military has assumed control of key buildings and uh, installations in Zimbabwe, such as the broadcasting service and the airport. And it appears that Robert Mugabe is uh, being kept in what the military call a safe place at the moment while matters unfold. So what we are going to discuss today is the implications of these events and to consider how matters might unfold in the forthcoming few days and weeks. The first question which is probably on everybody's mind is has a coup taken place in Zimbabwe? It was generally thought by analysts that Zimbabwe would not be subjected to a coup attempt because of the attitude of the region and certainly the African Union to coups that take place. Although SADC is generally tolerant of repression by governments in the region and human rights abuses, they entirely consistently draw the line at coup attempts. For that reason, it was thought that the military would not undertake a, a coup in Zimbabwe. And certainly, what the military are saying is that there has not been a coup in Zimbabwe. On Monday, the commander of the Defense Forces issued a statement that the military is bound by the Constitution to uh, protect the country, and then making a common confl conflation between state and the ZANU-PF, the ruling ZANU-PF party, the command of the Fence Force went on to say that when ZANU-PF as a political party is under threat, that places the country under threat and the military has a duty to intervene. And the way the commander threatened to intervene on Monday was to say that they were going to fish out, which was the words that uh, he used, the counter-revolutionary elements uh, in ZANU-PF, by which he meant the leaders of a particular faction in, in ZANU-PF, uh, the G40 faction, and was clearly targeting people such as Jonathan Moyo, ZANU-PF's political commissar, Xavier Kasakoueri, and Ignatius Chombo. It's very difficult to to work out what's going on precisely at the moment. Rumors are flying around the town. There's a great deal of uncertainty, but there is information that the key leaders of the G40 faction have been placed under arrest during the night. This then leads to the question as to what exactly is Mugabe's position here. And it seems that there's little coming back for Mugabe and it seems very unlikely that he'll be allowed to resume the presidency. If the military were allow him to resume the presidency or to resume his duties as president, this would place him in a position where he could regroup and the G40 group uh, could also gather their strength and launch a counter assault on the other faction within ZANU-PF, the Lacoste faction. So from where things are now, it seems like there's little uh, going back for Mugabe, and this might be the end of an era, the end of the Mugabe era for Zimbabwe. Because of the military's aversion to formally declaring a coup, to formally declare, declaring a, a takeover of the country, it's likely that the military might try to revert to some form of legality. The way that could be done would be by putting pressure on Mugabe, first of all, to reappoint Vice President Monangagwa or former Vice President Monangagwa, who was summarily dismissed from the party on the 6th of November. Once he is reappointed as Vice President, 
Mugabe could then step down and the constitutional provisions would kick in, allowing Monangagwa to take over as interim vice president for a maximum 90-day period. The Extraordinary Congress, which was long scheduled for uh, the, the end of the year on the 12th of December, could then be used to affirm Monangagwa as both party president and uh, to affirm him as the replacement to Mugabe as the president of the country. What then happens after that is very difficult to determine. Zimbabwe is essentially at a crossroads at the moment, and a lot will depend on how the military decides to proceed and how Emerson Monangagwa himself decides to proceed. Political logic would suggest that this military intervention should be short, short-lived, and the military, once they have installed or ensured that Monangagwa has taken over the presidency, that they retreat to their barracks and some form of legitimacy and constitutionality can be restored. Again, political logic suggests that, that the form of government that works after that should be some kind of unity government or national transitional authority. The succession politics of ZANU-PF have obscured another key issue in Zimbabwe's polity at the moment. And that key issue is that the Zimbabwean economy is on its knees. The, we have a hyperinflationary period beginning where the value of electronic money, which is being created by government, is depreciating rapidly. And there doesn't seem to be any way out of this morass because the economy is already technically dollarized. The only way to stop that hyperinflationary cycle is for government to stop creating cyber money or RTGS money as it's called in, in Zimbabwe. And the result of that would be the non-payment of wages to civil servants and massive shortages in the shops. So any incumbent or incoming government is going to have to make strides to try and rescue the economy and rescuing that economy means reconnecting with the international community and reconnecting with the international finance institutions. The best way to do that would be through some kind of transitional authority arrangement or unity government, or at the very least, a ZANU-PF government, which includes some elements of the opposition. So for example, Morgan Shangarai could be brought in as vice president, uh, Dumiso Dubengwa of the, the ZAPU grouping could be brought in as the other vice president and various MDC and other opposition figures, uh, presumably technocrats could be brought in as cabinet ministers to try and uh, help Zimbabwe out of its present predicament. This is all speculation. There's also the possibility that having now attained or being on the threshold of obtaining full power in, in Zimbabwe that Monangagwa may wish to keep it all for himself. It's also an assumption that the military is going to withdraw to the barracks and they are going to end their involvement in Zimbabwe's political affairs. That's by no means guaranteed. And certainly when the military does intervene in countries in political affairs, it takes quite some time for them to withdraw. However, because of the considerations around the perceived coup attempt, the military is being at pains to try and say that all they are doing is arresting those people who are responsible for the uh, turmoil within the ZANU-PF party, the turmoil in the country. They intend to fish out those people, uh, keep them in custody and try and bring some stability to the country as a result of that. The general mood in Zimbabwe at the moment is that although the military have surrounded uh, key administrative buildings, they are at the airport, I understand, uh, they are in control of the state broadcaster, um, people are going about their business pretty much as usual and in some of the shopping centers it would seem that nothing in fact had happened overnight. 
What needs to be borne in mind is that the people who have engineered this takeover of the reins of government do not have a good historical track record as far as governance is concerned and as far as human rights and democracy is concerned. And we need to bear in mind what happened in 2008 when Mugabe lost elections in March 2008, the military stepped in and we basically had what was called a veto coup, though it was not acknowledged as such, but basically the military stepped in to prevent Mugabe from losing power. So once again, we've seen the military intervening in order to rescue their favored candidate and to keep ZANU-PF in power and going as a party. So even if this is intended or advertised as a transitional period leading to the scheduled elections in 2018, it is unlikely that if Monangagwa, for example, were to lose those elections, that that loss would again be accepted by the military. Because what we are seeing here is a clear indication by the military that they are prepared to go to any steps in order to preserve uh, the political power that they favor uh, to be running the country. And this has grave implications for future democracy in Zimbabwe. So I think I can end there and open things up to, to questions um, to people that are, are online and, and watching. So um, if you would like to send any questions, I think there's a chat function which you can use to send questions and I'd be most happy to on, try and answer those. Right, I have two, two questions. Uh, uh, people are, uh, two questioners are asking the, as to the whereabouts of Grace Mugabe. This is not known for certain, but I believe that both Grace Mugabe and Robert Mugabe are at their residence in the Borodale Brook area of Harare. Uh, I understand there's a heavy military presence there. Uh, I have no doubt that the military would tell us that the military is there for the Mugabe's own protection and the military have made a statement to say that the first family is safe and are not under threat. I do believe that uh, a response is required from South Africa and certainly a response is required from SADC. The SADC Peace and Security Council needs to intervene. I know certain ANC officials last night were saying that this is an internal matter for, for Zimbabwe, but that was before the dramatic events that took place last night. And I don't see that this can be regarded as internal to Zimbabwe only, and some kind of intervention uh, will be required by SADC uh, through the leadership of, of Zimbabwe. Uh, sorry, through the leadership of uh, some intervention by SADC through the leadership of South Africa. Uh, another uh, question is where is Emerson Monangagwa? There are rumors floating around that he has uh, uh, flown to Manyami Air Base, the military air base uh, in Zimbabwe, and we wait to see what, what happens after that. Uh, a question is, how united is the army? That's, that's a question that we have been scratching our heads over for some time. The, the glib view was that the army was basically, uh, and the defense forces were backing Emerson Monangagwa, and that to some extent made Monangagwa unfireable. Closer analysis suggested that the military was not homogenous in this regard, that there were some divisions, and as a result of that, that Chiwenga would be unable to act in the manner that he has in fact done. It now appears clear that that presumption that the military would not act and would not intervene has been proved false, and despite the taunting of, uh, or even because of, or of the taunting by G40 of the military on Tuesday, Jonathan Moyer described uh, the military as a barking dog with no teeth. Uh, Chiwenga has certainly come out and shown that that is not the case. Uh, another question comes in as to who is actually running the country at the moment. The military is certainly in control of the administration of the country. 
uh, by all, all appearances, but they would certainly deny that they are running the country. We haven't had the classic coup situation where the uh, commander of the defense forces has appeared on TV to state that the country is now under control of the military, uh, to declare martial law, to suspend the constitution. None of that has happened. The, the military is sticking to its line that they are merely cleansing the party of, of counter-revolutionary elements in the interests of the country. And once that has been accomplished, they will return to barracks. They did, the commander of the defense forces did in his statement on Monday, indicate that he owed allegiance to the president and they would continue to obey the president. Uh, that to a certain extent was window dressing, but I think it's a pretense that the military will continue with until this matter resolves. Uh, there's been a question as to what has SADC's engagement been on, on the political crisis in Zimbabwe as it's been ongoing. Uh, one of the difficulties that we've had is that uh, uh, South Africa has been very much engaged with its own political turmoil, the issues of, of state capture and the issues around Jacob Zuma. And unfortunately, eyes have been averted from this brewing crisis uh, in Zimbabwe. Some political commentators have tried to point out to the South Africans that there's a perfect storm brewing in Zimbabwe. And it seems that uh, this is precisely what has come to pass. And there now needs to be some, some robust in intervention in Zimbabwe to prevent the situation from deteriorating further. Uh, a second question or another question that's come in is as to whether uh, there will be any pushback against the military, whether the G40 can engage in some sort of fight back strategy. That's very difficult to see. It's, it looks like that there was a division or there is a division in the security sector between the police and the military. Uh, it's possible that uh, Augustine Chuhuri has also been placed under arrest or, or placed under house arrest and he has not been able to mobilize elements of the police force uh, against the military. As I mentioned earlier, things are proceeding pretty much as normal uh, in Harare today. And that includes the mounting of police roadblocks where the police are continuing uh, even during this crisis to try and fleece motorists of uh, $10 to allow them before they can be allowed to proceed down the road. Um, uh, some of the people I spoke to in the early hours of the morning uh, said that the police uh, on the streets and the military on the streets uh, seem to have something of a spring in their step. And despite the undemocratic nature of military intervention in politics, there seems to be considerable support both within the military at, uh, at a grassroots level or at a lower ranks level and within the police for the events that have taken place last night. Uh, I think that answers the question that's just come in from Liesl Smith, uh, whether, there's, whether ordinary Zimbabweans will, will support this issue. Uh, that certainly seems to be the case from my discussions with general people today. I think it's an indication of how bad things had, had become that Zimbabweans are delighted that uh, uh, Konstantin Chiwenga, who was responsible, it is understood for much of the violence that took place in 2008, and somebody with a poor human rights record such as Morangagwa um, is likely to become the next president. People seem to prefer this issue, uh, these people in place, rather than Robert Mugabe and his wife, Grace Mugabe. But I think it's more a question of people seeing that change of whatever nature is about to happen, and that this is the end of the Mugabe era, and to try and work through to some democratic dispensation after this. It's quite clear that uh, this is a, a, an instance of hubris on the part of Mugabe. Mugabe overestimated his powers, he, he overplayed his hand, and his promotion of his wife, who began to look like she might succeed as president, was a bridge too far and was certainly a bridge too far for people in the military. The analysis until now had been that the military was not so much pro-Emerson Monangagwa, 
as anti the Mugabe dynastic project. And it seems that uh, antipathy to the dynastic project has manifested in the events that took place last night. Uh, a question which has come in is whether this is an opportunity for the opposition. I certainly think it is. Um, if Monangagwa can be persuaded that the political logic is that there is some sort of alliance, there is some sort of unity government, there is some sort of transitional arrangement which involves elements of the opposition where you have a technocratic government which tries to rescue Zimbabwe from its steep economic decline and possible meltdown in the next month or so. Uh, one of the questions was whether there's any overarching strategy on this. My analysis of the situation is that uh, the whole issue has not unfolded in accordance with plan. I believe that the plan of G40 and the plan of Mugabe was to slowly ease Emerson Monangagwa towards the exit. And the hope was that during that transition process where Monangagwa was slowly shown the door that his supporters might uh, abandon ship. It was also a way of testing the waters, testing the strength of Monangagwa, while at the same time, the ongoing purges, the ongoing whittling away of Monangagwa's support in party structures was taking place. Then on the 4th of November, uh, Grace Mugabe was addressing a youth interface rally and at that rally, a group of supporters, Lacoste supporters, um, started to boo and to throw insults at Grace Mugabe, calling her, amongst other things, a thief. Um, and that, that seems to have precipitated the current situation. Because after those insults were hurled at Grace Mugabe, Robert Mugabe, the president, was absolutely furious. People who were present at that event say he was shaking with anger. And Mugabe, I think, shot from the hip, abandoned his carefully laid plans and said that he could fire Monangagwa, he could even fire him tomorrow. And Mugabe attempted to do precisely that. I think Mugabe's plan to, to gently ease Monangagwa towards the exit was precisely out of fear of what has now happened. Mugabe thought, that if he summarily and suddenly says to Monangagwa, you are fired, this kind of crisis would result. So he had intended to proceed with the whittling away and the removal of Monangagwa from the halls of power to take place gradually. He lost his temper, he abandoned his plan, and we are now in the position where we are today. So I don't think what is happening now is part of an overarching plan. It may have been that the Lacoste people who lined up to boo the First Lady had anticipated the possibility of this kind of reaction and knowing that in advance that Chiwenga would in fact intervene. And if that's the case, then things have unfolded in accordance with their plans, or so it seems at the moment. Uh, there's a question from Stephanie saying that uh, the, that there's been a statement from the South African presidency which no, makes no mention of restoring power to Mugabe. Uh, my assessment of the situation is that it doesn't seem possible for Mugabe to return uh, to the presidency. I think he can return to the presidency for just long enough to appoint or reappoint Monangagwa as vice president. Um, or even to, to short circuit that and simply say he's retiring and appointing Monangagwa as vice president. But it seems difficult to see how he could resume the presidency without Monangagwa and the Lacoste grouping think that he might then use uh, presidential powers to try and regroup and, and reassert his, himself. Uh, Liesel has asked uh, how ordinary people feel about this in light of the, the 2008 uh, veto coup that I mentioned earlier when the military stepped in and prevented uh, Mugabe's loss in the election resulting in a loss of power. This certainly, these considerations have certainly been brushed aside in the excitement of the moment and 
with the excitement of people seeing this as being the end of the Mugabe era. The, the fear is, of course, is that that reality, the fact that the military is uh, prepared to go to these kind of lengths to keep the kind of ZANU-PF they want governing the country, uh, should be a matter for, of great apprehension to the people of Zimbabwe. And we are really dependent on the idea that Monangagwa will follow political logic, will follow up on the statements he's made in the last couple of years, that he's an economic pragmatist and a reformer, and that those aspects of economic reform will require some sort of unity or coalition or inclusive government, which includes technocrats from the opposition, and the sort of liberalization of the polity that we saw in, uh, in 91 with the uh, opening up of, of Zimbabwe, the liberalization of Zimbabwe and the introduction of a justiciable constitution. The uh, question is whether the, this situation presents the chance to hold early elections and return Zimbabwe to normalcy. Uh, that depends on the trajectory we, we, we follow uh, from this point. If, for example, Monangagwa decides to put in some sort of national transitional authority, it might be decided that the best route is to suspend the elections uh, for the time being, to stabilize the country and then move forward to elections at a later date. On the other hand, it may be a good opportunity for Monangagwa to consolidate his power. He can use the Congress to claim popular support as the leader of the ZANU-PF party, and we can go into elections maybe a bit later than ZANU-PF had anticipated, but within the constitutional time frame, that's before the 22nd of August, and it would certainly make political sense for Monangagwa to conduct those elections which I have no doubt that ZANU-PF could win, uh, and that way to legitimate his power, so it could not be thought that he, he came through, came to power through a coup or an undeclared coup. Uh, will former President uh, Mbeki play a role in brokering peace? I am asked by Christopher Sonke. Uh, Tabo Mbeki does seem to be the go-to guy for, for these kind of, of issues. Um, Zimbabweans would certainly rather he wasn't um, because of his track record uh, from 2008 to uh, 2009. Um, but certainly he seems to be respected by the region and by the AU as a, as a broker in these situations. So certainly it's not beyond the bounds of possibility that he would be brought in to try and uh, calm matters and prevent any further escalation of the situation. Uh, the next question is, what should the, the international actors be doing at this point? The, the requirement, I think, at this point for, for the international community is to emphasize the need for a return to legality, for that the constitution be followed, and to encourage Ponangagwa to, to use this moment to announce a break with the past and the intention to build a democratic future for Zimbabwe. I should perhaps, while we're waiting for a few more questions to come in, uh, point out that although the commander of the Defence Forces has been at pains uh, to try and indicate that the steps that he is taking are within the Constitution because it falls within the Defence Forces mandate to protect the country and to, to maintain stability in the country, it's quite clear that uh, the provisions requiring the, the military to refrain from interference in political matters, to not show partisanship for any particular person or party, those provisions have not been complied with and it would be difficult to construe the conduct of the military in this situation as being in accordance with the Constitution, regardless of Mr. Chiwenga's protestations to the contrary. Uh, Karen asks about uh, the implications for the ZRP and its uh, crackdown on, on, on civil society. That was a rather peculiar subplot that was going on at precisely the same moment. 
uh, we have seen the uh, the NGO who, who does satirical videos, etc. Magamba. We have seen arrests of, of members of their staff, and I understand yesterday there was a, a full raid on their offices uh, with search warrants for computers, etc. Why that should be happening at this particular point in time is not known. It might have been that there was a factional dimension to that, where the police believed that um, the the comments that were coming out of Magamba were in some way low cost uh, driven, but this is pure speculation and I have no idea why this crackdown on civil society was taking place. Certainly we expected at this point in time for there to be some increased repression and a bit of intimidation and possibly some violence in the rural communities as as, as Zona PF prepared for the 2018 polls, which at that stage conventional wisdom suggested might be called early in March. All these particular dynamics, uh, um, analyses and configurations have all changed dramatically in the last 24 hours and we certainly need to reassess how these dynamics are now going to play out uh, in, in the light of these events that took place last night.